Hi everybody, welcome to Coffee, Tea or Sex. I'm Karina Velasco and today we have a very special guest. He's been with us before, Robert Silver. Welcome back. Hi Karina. Expert, massage therapist, we talked about touch. Uh, you teach around the world, you do permaculture, you have a center in Hawaii, you do the Tantra Festival. I mean, you're all over, all over the place in the good sense of way. <laughs> <laughs> So today um, I want to talk to you about something that I think is crucial because everything is shifting in life. There's an evolution, you know, in the, the kind of foods we're eating, the kind of companies we're joining, mm. what we're expressing, the social media, like everything is shifting. But still we have that perception of sex is the same, like sex is porn or sex is like penetration and you just go like boom, 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 and that's it. And I think it's time for sex to evolve. So I've been to your classes and I love what you say about conscious love making, which is part of like the evolution of sex. At, at least it was for my mind, like I was blown away. So tell me a little bit about the mm. difference between regular sex versus conscious love making. Oh, well, it's a huge topic, um, but it's juicy. People are interested. People want to have better sex, but yet it's not just really about technique. Um, it's about our mindset, and really it's about we create our own reality. Yeah, and people can say, oh, yeah, you create your own reality, but really the sex that you're having is a reflection of your relationship with yourself. So where we're at in our spiritual and conscious development we get, a, we get a really visceral uh, feedback um, from the type of sex that we're having. Okay, you say uh, sex is a uh, direct relationship to my relationship with myself. What do you really mean by that? Well, how we feel about ourselves, okay. um, the beliefs that we have about ourselves, um, our bodies, our genitals, uh, what, how, the stories we have about who we are, where we came from, our childhood, uh, the, the stories we tell ourselves uh, about whether we're a good lover or not. Um, all of this yeah. ends up actually creating the experiences that we're having. So let's say if I'm working on myself in a spiritual level, like really understanding what's going on in my body, in my emotions, in my mind, what kind of beliefs I have around sexuality and my body, then that's a good path for sex to evolve. But I have to go through that kind of practice of self you know, development to be able to transform my sex life. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and sex is, um, we've used the term uh, a crucible. It's like, it's like it's the fire, the intensity, the heat of sexual passion actually also burns away our impurities. So from a yogic perspective, um, whatever impurities we have in our consciousness or our body emotionally, everything is brought to the surface with our sexuality. And I live in Hawaii next to an active volcano. And one of the things that happens when people are close to a volcano is all of their emotions come up. All of the stuff in people's subconscious comes up. I mean, why is it that you start having sex with somebody and then you can talk to them and treat them in a way that you would never talk to anybody else on the planet. All of a sudden you turn into this completely irrational, yelling, screaming three-year-old child just because you've been, you've been rubbing genitals with this person for a couple months. Like, why is that? That's why sex is so tricky. That's why people say sex is complicated because it's also the energy of transformation or purification. Absolutely. <laughs> so. Okay. So, how can we make sex uncomplicated? I don't know if we can make it. <laughs> I don't know if we can make it uncomplicated. Please, just because. Give us, give us, please. I think most people want sex that's interesting. Yeah. Um, 
But there are certain practices that I've developed and that I've learned from other teachers um, and, and taken things and tweaked things so that I have a definitely a, a very different experience of sexuality. And what we're teaching in the courses is a way to really look at sex um, as a path of spiritual development. And it's not just like, oh, I wear white and I pretend that I'm a loving person and I'm super pure. And No, it's like, let's actually inhabit our bodies. Let's be really um, courageous at speaking our truth and asking for what we want being able to speak and move on our desires and to just follow the truth of our desire wherever it's going. Um, and that takes a lot of courage because most people have fear, shame, and guilt around their sexuality because that's how they were brought up. Even if someone dresses in sexy clothes or they might have, you know, have had sex with, you know, hundreds of different people, a lot of people are still actually carrying a lot of negativity around sexuality. And I think the key of what you said I mean, it's just beautiful, like using that sexual energy or the act of love making for a transformation, for spiritual growth. Like not separating that from spirituality, but uniting both, right? Like merging the both, which is Tantra. Absolutely. And if we're making love with someone, we're really saying, I'm inviting you into my life, into my body, into my temple, my energy, body. And I'm inviting in the reflection that you, you're going to give me. I'm inviting in you to share your, not only your body, but your emotions, share your perceptions, and for us to make this a spiritual meeting. So if you're, you know, you, you go up to a, a tall mountain in the, the Himalayas, you, you see a spiritual master, some guy with long hair, and a beard, and a, and a robe, shirt. and a silk shirt. <laughs> well, I got this from Bali, but in yeah. any case, um, and you go up and you prostate yourself before this, uh, this guru, you're actually doing something similar when you're making love with someone because you're really opening yourself to this person and you're opening yourself to the, to the mystery of life and what may be explored with this person. And that's a very different thing than just like, oh, I haven't had sex for a while and uh, you know, if, I ha if I have an orgasm, I'll relax and I'll sleep, I'll sleep well tonight. But that's beautiful what you say because we also have this narrative about casual sex just being like, I'm just going to go, I'm not going to feel connected, I'm just going to have like sex, probably I'm going to be on high or on drugs or on alcohol and then I'll forget about it and I won't see that person just to get my needs met. But like love making and conscious love making, you can bring that even if it's casual in the sense that you don't have a long term relationship or you're not dating, like you can even like practice that with friends, right? Absolutely. I'm a great proponent of having um, what we would call conscious sensuality practice sessions. And people say, Yeah, what's what? that? What oh, yeah, the, I was like, What, what the, the heck hell? is this? Yeah, what is practicing? it? Practicing. Like, who, who are you? Well, every time you have sex, you're actually practicing. So, what are you practicing? Can you just think of sex in terms of yoga, in terms of meditation, in terms of, yes, there's physical mm -hmm. exercise. Um, it's a communication practice. And if we set aside a time, if we say, hey, let's, let's have a date. And instead of, instead of watching a movie and having a drink and, you know, at a certain point, like, I make my move and I'm, like, going to try to have sex with you or something, it's like, if we could actually just sit and meditate and eye gaze and then say, wow, what is it that we want to practice in this session together? And maybe it's sexual, maybe it's not sexual, but if it is sexual, we could say, I want to practice something. I want to practice speaking my truth, my boundaries, asking for what I want. I want to, as a woman, maybe I want to practice initiating. I want to practice being on top and really going for my pleasure, not just kind of surrendering and opening and letting the man have his pleasure. Um, for me to give that to him as a gift. You can practice meditation, yoga. I mean, you can do whatever you want, like using that energy and that connection, right? Absolutely. That's amazing. I mean, because, I mean, we, we have like just this context of like that sex and, and we see it in porn and that's not reality, that's not real, that doesn't really, you know, bring anything plus or benefits into our life. So I, I think the evolution of sexuality is like connection, 
you know, connection. And, and I love what you said, like doing a practice, which sometimes even the practice could be, I just want to have like hard, like crazy wild sex right. with a win. Really, really passionate. Really passionate. Yeah. I had an experience one time, this beautiful young woman um, came up to me, she was interested in the conscious sensuality work. Um, she really had never had an experience of, of really being connected and, and loving, um, you know, just connected lovemaking, put it that way. And, you know, and she basically said, wow, I'd really love to have an experience with you. And. It was very clear that this was not going to be a partnership, wasn't going to get married. This is someone who's, you know, a fair amount younger, but she's above legal age. She's definitely of consent. I'm glad. I'm glad you, you said that. And, and I didn't initiate with her. She initiated with me. And she said, you know, I like your energy and I want to have an exploration with you. And it's like, how amazing, you know, to have a woman in her early 20s who's beautiful and kind of any guy she sees. And she's actually saying, no, you know, it's like I can have anyone I want sexually, but what I want is to have an experience with someone that is going to repattern my neurology. Okay. Or give me that experience. Yeah. Because there's no reference points. I think like that's why we talk about sexuality and we like are talking about this examples. Like many of you would say, like, oh, I don't get it. Because like there's no reference points. Like all the reference points we have around sexuality is porn or like, you know, the Catholic beliefs around sexuality or the submissive dominating, you know, right. that's what's out there. But like really like all those new ways, it's, it's about experiencing with someone, right? Yeah. And I mean, in this case, you know, there was a conversation that was happening before and even during our lovemaking. So, I mean, we're literally, you know, in the act of sexual intercourse and we're just pausing and breathing and eye gazing and we're communicating and we're talking, you know, and she's just expressing how much gratitude she, is having in that moment for having someone who's just present to her, who has no agenda, but just to connect with her as a human being. And, uh, you know, it was a really, really beautiful experience. Um, and I love it when I find women who are in their power. If a woman is in her power and she can speak her desire, if she can speak her boundaries, if she can initiate, um, that's definitely um, gonna be of interest to me. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of women are, are pretending that they're not powerful because they don't want to scare off a man. You know, that they want to, you know, play this game of letting the man kind of be the initiator or the hunter, and they play the game of being innocent and submissive. And it's fun to play those games, but it's also fun to play different games. But it also, like you say, different games. There's also a lot of women that in the real world we have to be working, achieving. Like we're very much into that like masculine energy. And when it comes to sexuality, you just want to surrender and be just like, just take me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say that again. That, that was really, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but really, you know, it, it's, it's shifting, you know, because it, like, like also the, the roles men or women are playing in the everyday life are a little bit different. You know, it's like, it's time also for men like to surrender a little bit more, but women too, like we're becoming like super women. So sometimes when we wanna be in a love making conscious, sometimes we just wanna let go and feel Absolutely. appreciated, desired. I think desire, that's a huge thing for like the conscious love making. Because, like, usually guys, they text you, they invite you to the bar, you take two beers, and then they sleep with you, and that's all the desire. Like, what happened with that? How can a man create, and even a woman, like, with seduction for her, but a, a man, that desire? How can you make a woman feel desired that it's not in a bar with two beers? Mm -hmm. I'd say it takes courage to be vulnerable. To be vulnerable and just actually share um, who you are and share what's in your field of awareness. I use that term field of awareness to describe sensations, emotions, and thoughts, um, perceptions that we're having. Um, and that's some of the language that we can get into. And it can sound like, oh, geez, I just want to have a really hot, sexy time. Can I, can I not just have like some really intense, hard, fast, you know, that, that's what I really like. And it's like, yeah. That's great too, that can be conscious as well. And that's why the, I'm not using the term slow or um, 
um, you know, some term to, to make it feel like, oh, we're not allowed to have very passionate, yeah, just intense. Yeah, yeah, you can intention. have very, very intense, passionate lovemaking and have it still be conscious. Okay, so it's, it's not about morality here. Like conscious is just a term that you know what you want, you express your desires, you're present, you have an intention and you share that with the other person. Yeah, we're talking about being empowered, knowing the body, the emotions, and speaking the truth. Um, and what really supports that um, is making love with someone who you trust actually cares about you and is there also to support you in whatever uh, sexual healing may, may be required. And I love that you bring up sexual healing because there was a song, in, I think, in the 70s, sexual healing, Gay. baby. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, in, in the history of sexuality, um, they've used that energy for healing, like in Chinese medicine, right? Like they use that, the sex energy, even for restorative, rejuvenation, like beauty, like it has so it's many our benefits. It's life force energy. It's our life force energy. When we feel turned on, when we're making love on a regular basis and we're circulating that energy and we're really in our joy, we're full of life. People that are having really good sex have a lot of energy, they have magnetism, they tend to attract money <laughs> and experiences that are pleasurable um, because we're saying yes to life, yeah? Mm, and how can we do like a ritual for sexual healing, mm. you know, because for example, a, a lot of women like we, we hold like our shame and our guilt like in our pelvic area and our cervix. Sometimes we cannot have orgasms because there's like a block, you know, submission. We have like our chastity belt. Mm -hmm. So is there techniques to be able to support women to open up and achieve orgasms? Absolutely, and we teach sexual healing and empowerment courses where we go exactly um, to that place. And what's required is that people feel safe and supported in, in having strong emotional experiences. Because sometimes women will make love and then they start to cry. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to like ruin the mood. And it's always like, oh. Oh, I love that I come and I oh, cry. Yeah. You're you're having you're having an eyegasm. <laughs> an eyegasm. You're having an eyegasm. Because you're like, clearing emotions. Because there's emotion that's that's clearing. We, sometimes there's a story or a memory, and sometimes it's just pure energy that's just moving through that needs to be cleared. Um, I would say from having worked with quite a few um, people couples, women around the world, um, that if a woman's experiencing any level of pain or discomfort, we want to really encourage her to make sound and to move that through. Instead of shutting down, if you're engaging sexually with somebody, you can just say, hey, you know, sometimes when I'm making love, um, I'll notice there's pain or discomfort. I want to be able to, to make sound and I, if necessary, I may need to even speak to you as somebody who, um, uh, that I had a, a challenging experience with. So actually even role playing. And the problem is, is that if you go too deep into it, then you're going into a therapy session yeah. and, you're not go, and you're not actually um, making love with the other person. You're just doing a sexual healing session. So what some people really need is they actually do need to work with someone, a man or a woman, <clears throat> someone who is trained to support their sexual healing um, so that we don't try to find a partner yeah. to sexually heal us. Yeah, that would become boring. But what I mean is like you can be with your partner like in lovemaking and just like create even a silent intention or shared intention like let's use this energy for my adre adrenals or let's use this energy to have more, you know, uh, healing in our lungs or like whatever is happening in our body because it's powerful. So you can just communicate very simply about what's happening in your body and you know when I'm working with women I'll just say you know if you're having pain or discomfort when you're making love you can just pause and then tell your partner oh you know that it's there there's there's a pain and maybe it's physical maybe it's emotional um, and actually even going to that place say you have a place in your in your vagina where there's a pain you're making love and it's like a lot of women would just say oh I'm gonna shift my position I'm gonna stop not communicate verbally and then the guy is kind of like, I don't really know what's going on here. If she says, you know what, actually in the upper left 
part of my vagina, like there's a little bit of a pain there. Could you actually like hold some attention there while I make some sound? Like that could actually shift and release a lot of energy. I know it does, but it sounds weird. It sounds weird, Yeah. but this is the reality of the situation. Uh, a lot of women, they've been having sex with guys who watch porn, and what do we see in porn? Hard, vigorous sex, right? Yeah. That's typically what we see. Truly, that is not the type of sex most women can have until they've been aroused and stimulated making love for at least 20 or 30 minutes. And most guys simply are not able to do that because that's not how they've trained themselves. So. Yeah, you, like they even like it, they force their way into the vagina yeah. instead of just, you know, creating that arousing because they're in a hurry that the woman might change their mind. Right. And I like to use the, instead of penetration, I like to put it from the woman's point of view of envelopment. She's using her her yoni or her vagina to envelop the man. Mm -hmm. So she's really empowered and drawing in like his energy, his invitation. physical being. Like yeah. I'm ready to invite you into my home. Yeah. She's she's drawing him in. And it's the same thing. So a lot of women because of this very vigorous type of sex that is common now, they, they have, have pain, pain in their cervix. Why? Because the lingam or the penis is hitting the cervix. And men are just not aware of it. And women, a lot of times, then there's pain there or it's just simply numb. And they're not aware that they could even have a cervical orgasm, that there's actually a lot of pleasure in the cervix. Yeah, and I like to think about like our genitals as part of our full body. So if we bring attention through massage, when we have pain in our shoulder or we have pain in our hand, like even, you know, it's like I have pain here and you give your hand to your mother, to your friend, to whoever, like, just hold it here. Like we do that all the time. You know, why why not hold that into our genitals and pelvic area that we hold so many so many things like we don't have touch usually yeah. to liberate that. Well, and that's why it's wonderful if people, you know, have the opportunity to do a course where you could come with a with your partner or even a friend and it's it may, fun. It may sound really crazy, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do a workshop where we're gonna do really intimate massage, but if you can just drop into the space of we're all people, we're all human beings, we have bodies, we want safety, we want pleasure. Um, we're just learning uh, and exploring with each other. No, and I think that's beautiful because most of the people, we, we wanna know more about sex, you know, and sexuality and, and touch and healing and spiritual awakening. But those are things we need to experience. It's not things we're gonna like learn in porn or in TV. I mean, except the show, of course. <laughs> no, but in TV or in a book, you have to actually have an experience to believe that it's true and that it can heal and that you can be happier and feel more pleasurable, pleasure and feel more connected. But it's through experience that we learn and, and how weird it is like to sit on your TV and jack off like watching porn, you know? That's I think for me more weird than going to a workshop with experts when you're gonna meet like beautiful people where there's a safe space to explore all this. Absolutely. And you know, for women to have that experience where you could say, wow, I'm gonna have someone massage me intimately for a half an hour or 40 minutes and really slow conscious attention. Um, I was just thinking about it, I was like, yes, I think I wanna to go to your next workshop, Robert. <laughs> Good, I hope you come. Yeah, because it's a beautiful, it's beautiful like just to be able to experience that. Hmm. Like you don't have that in your everyday life. My hope is that at some point when kids are getting sex education, they're, they're actually gonna have practice groups and where they get to, to practice and explore as opposed to getting drunk and fumbling around in the back of a car or wherever. I don't know if kids still go to the movie theater, or whatever. It's like, oh, you actually go, wow, we're gonna actually practice. We're gonna practice giving and receiving touch and communicating about what we're experiencing. Sounds radical, but I, I think actually um, it's, it's pretty logical, yeah? And I think, you know, it's going to be, I mean, if a lot of people are afraid about, like, because there's also this perception, like, people who are into Tantra, 
people who are like into conscious love making. They just go and like have sex with everybody in the world and they're super open. Actually, I think also this makes it more discerning because you really get in tune with what your body really needs. So for me, it's like if a 15 year old has this information, you know, it's going to be safer for them to explore sexuality that without it. Absolutely. I don't know if you agree with yeah, that. Yeah, and I mean, if teenagers uh, are supported by their parents and schools and society in having exploration, they're much more likely to be able to actually hold their own boundaries. And, and then later in life, they're going to be able to say, yeah, you know, it's like I feel like I've, I've had my sexual freedom. And there was a, a spiritual teacher by the name of Osho, and he talked a lot about the relationship between sexuality and spirituality. And it's my personal belief and experience that when young people are given a lot of support for sexual freedom, they actually make way better choices. It's just like the kids in Europe who can drink alcohol and, and they end up being very responsible with it as opposed to still being like 30 some years old and getting drunk every weekend. It's like, oh, if alcohol is just something that's present and available, you learn how to work with that. Same thing with sex. I love that you're sharing this information because it's crucial for the evolution of sex. And um, I just wanted to ask you like a few like tough questions. Okay. Okay. What At least got? I'm communicating beforehand what I'm gonna You're ask. You're preparing me. I'm preparing you. Okay. So take out the pause. Not just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. A lot of women, you know, come to me and they're afraid to go to this kind of workshops because they say like this tantra guys or the guys like sexual healing or teachers who teach sexuality. They're sleeping around and they use that thing about consciousness and spirituality to sleep with women, to get women into their beds. Mm -hmm. So there's always been this perception. Do you think it comes still from that belief? And like you say, the sex is a fire. So it's bringing that belief or is it true? Oh, I think it's true. Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely true. It's, it's true that uh, women want sexual healing. They want to have experiences of healing and a connection. And it's also true that, that those of us who are teaching uh, these courses, this is something that we have to deal with because we're not just dealing with sex, we're dealing with power. And the minute that someone is taking on the role of a teacher or a guru or, you know, there's some sort of power imbalance, that's where we have this concern around, you know, is this person abusing their position? Are we trying to manipulate people um, by asserting that we have some sort of authority? Um, you know, so it is very contentious um, and it's controversial. What I also find is that everyone wants safety, everyone wants pleasure. And experience. And everyone wants experiences. So, you know, there's, there's some teachers that would say, uh, you know, I never engage with my students. Other people would say I won't engage during a course or other teachers just say, I teach sexuality, and if there's someone who wants to have a sexual experience with yeah, me... Yeah, that would be weird, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching sexuality, but I'm not having sex. <laughs> right, so, you yeah. know, and that has to do with um, empowerment. Because when people really feel empowered, that they're not giving their power away, saying like, oh, you're my teacher, tell me what I should do, that's a very different place than someone saying, oh, you've ha you have certain knowledge and experiences, um, I'd like to have a shared experience with you. You know, if you're coming from an empowered place, then you're not going to play victim. Yeah, because it's your choice. You want to go yeah. into that experience versus like this guy is ma manipulating me to get into bed with him. If, if we're projecting out that someone is manipulating us, what we're really saying is we're afraid that we're out of touch with ourselves. If we know ourselves, we don't have to worry. If someone's trying to do some sort of eye-gazing, mind-control, hypnotic, tantric, googly goop, it's what? like... What? <laughs> it's like, you will take off your clothes and yeah. have sex with me. I mean, it, it's not going to work on someone who's empowered and aware. Yeah, but I think that's, that's why it's important, you know, if you're going to open yourselves up to really explore sexuality or conscious love making, just to be aware of like, what do you want? What do you desire? Which are my boundaries? You know, 
and start from that place because if not it can get really tricky and like you say sex is an energy of fire a lot of shit comes up you know so just to be aware of that absolutely and that's i mean that's what we have to go through to to for the evolution of sex i think that's why people were so afraid or a lot of people are afraid of sexuality because it only unleashes like all these things we usually don't want to see to be able to go through that to achieve like deep level levels of pleasure and connection and connection with the divine meditation like everything you ever wanted but yeah. you have to go through that right yeah sometimes we have to go through hell to get to heaven i mean this is the archetypal yeah, you, journey you call it very radical but yeah to hell this is you have to go through all of your hell to reach the state of heaven mm -hmm. and if we're willing to go on that journey if we have the courage to say yeah it's not like oh i'm going to try to make everything perfect i have the candles and the music and the wine and it's going to be a perfect evening and we're going to just feel nothing but bliss you're probably setting yourself up for hell but if you actually say i'm willing to go on this journey and i know it's we're going to go into some territory that's going to be difficult challenging painful but i'm going to really be courageous and be true to myself and still go, I'm still going on this journey, then we can actually expand. We can expand our range of sensation, our range of emotion, and we can have experiences that repattern our experience of sexuality. So this is one of the ways to create this conscious lovemaking, but what are, what are the roots of all those beliefs about like the shadow, hell, um, pleasure, you know, like everything you're talking about, does it come from the Vedic scriptures or from China or what, what's, what's the root of all, all you're sharing at the yeah. moment with this yeah. frame of mind? Yeah, I, I would say that my influences personally are, are out of uh, traditional tantric teachings um, from India, uh, from Taoism, which is coming more from, from China, Taoist sexual practices, uh, Zen Buddhism, um, doing different types of massage including Hawaiian Lomi massage, Thai massage, cranial sacral, uh, many different forms of body work. Uh, and then also doing a, you know, more modern Western psychology uh, from Freud and Jung and, and people that really worked uh, with our shadow and our consciousness and understanding how our subconscious issues that we're working on relationally uh, they really impact how we see ourselves, each other, and the world, and they have a huge impact on our sexuality. And the reason sexuality is such a key to personal and spiritual development is because it becomes very obvious what our material is when we're having sex. Okay, that so, sounds like, that sounds pretty interesting. Well, you're going to figure out what your material is with your yeah, mother, your yeah. father, um, with, you know, your boss, your relationship with spirit, God, goddess, divine, you're gonna figure out what your material is yeah. if you can stay really present and conscious um, while you're engaging sexually. Well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, Robert. And I'm, I'm you know, that's why I love talking about sex more than coffee or tea because there's so many ways, there's so many paths. Um, it's infinite, like the information around sexuality that we have available at the moment, the different belief systems, the different methods, the different techniques to be, you know, like really aware of our bodies and being our sexual power. It's out there and it's a pleasure for me to share it. And then you choose whatever works for you because this is what life is about, like choosing and having the power to choose whatever makes you feel good so thank you and we can find you at your website which is conscious sensuality conscious sensuality .com, as well as the hawaii tantra festival and we run that festival every year in january in hawaii it's a beautiful beautiful opportunity aloha in the big island that's right great thank you so much robert for being here oh you're welcome thanks for inviting me karina and thank you all of you see you in coffee tea or sex next time and don't forget to have some right now mm -hmm.